Okay, so it's been about a week since the introduction and release of Nin Herzog, or Nin for short, with the most recent update. It's given me time to quickly invest what I could into her, read up about her skills, and do a little bit of theory crafting. So she's a UR tank hero that uses the Luminarch and Verdian factions. Um, there hasn't been a UR tank hero since Marduk last year in August and there hasn't been a UR hero that uses Luminark and Verdian since October of 2021 with this set. So it's been a while. So let's look into what she does and who she is. So she's an offensive tank. You have support tanks like Yi Sun Shin or Athena, and then you have offensive tanks such as Hades, Marduk, and now Nin. Some of her key functions are crowd control, damage reduction for herself at all times, and for two heroes when she uses her skill, self healing, and a counter hit system where she stores up potential energy. So let's look at some of her skills. Okay, so we have her ultimate, which is called Nibiru Fury. So it deals five hits. The first four do 100% of her attack, and the fifth does 300% for 700% total. With the upgrades, they go to 110% and 340% respectively which brings the total up to 770%. So each hit reduces the enemy's reduction defense by 15%, and I believe it only applies when the hits are done. There is no... Their defense is reduced for 5 seconds, 7 seconds, 10 seconds, so I think it just applies to her hits until the 5th one is done. And with her fifth hit, if she knocks the enemy and it hits the back wall, the enemy will be stunned for two and a half seconds. And that can upgrade to four seconds. Alright, and so this is her one passive called Immovable Mountain. And it reduces all of her incoming damage by 20% and it can be upgraded to 35% later. Uh, the damage is reduced, but it's also stored up as potential energy, which can be stored up to 40% of her max health. All right, and here are her divinity skill recommendations. For the most part, it looks all right to me. I would just switch out Sunder with Corrosion, since Corrosion it can apply to more situations than Sunder. And there's the rest of the Divinity node recommendations. So the last part, I would say it's correct to have Wrath, Corrosion, and Eterna. That's actually what I was going to recommend for a Pv PvE Divinity setup. Um, if you were to awaken Nin's Epic Antique and get her to 7 nodes, um, then what I would recommend is Eterna, Wrath, and instead of Corrosion, Colossus. Just so she has more damage. Because um, with her ultimate, the amount of defense it reduces by plus Eterna, it's more than, it's more than enough to reduce the enemy's defense. Um, either that or her ignoring the defense in Eterna's case. Um, for a PvP setup, I would actually recommend Wrath and Panacea. Uh, as you saw before, that was one of her tier 3 skills. Simply because with Panacea, she has 30% more health, which contributes towards more stored potential energy damage that she can deal with her Immovable Mountain skill, uh, passive skill. 
Um, and again, seven nodes, I would go with Wrath and Panacea still, and then just add Embroilment, uh, the tier 1 skill. So those are my recommendations for her Divinity skills. Alright, so now that we're done with the Divinity skills, let's move on to her Iconic Weapon. Alright, and I don't have her Iconic Weapon Awakened yet, but with a lot of the heroes, you have the Chimera Beast Soul Seal attribute, um, varies. Um, with her, it provides more critical defense, so that's good to know. Let's move on to her Iconic Weapon effects. Okay, so at 100, every 3 seconds potential energy equal to 3% of her max health is gained. 200, 5%. And then at 300, 7%. 400 Iconic Weapon is a pretty important one. Um, the two heroes with the lowest health that she provides damage protection with Alpine Shelter to are immune from crowd control for the 5 seconds. Um, when she reaches 500, potential energy will clear her debuffs and make her immune to control for 5 seconds. And then you have her last iconic weapon effect at 600, where her potential energy capacity is increased by 30%, bringing up to a max of 70%. And then also any potential energy that she gains is increased by 30%. So going back to her 300 skill, 7% every 3 seconds would actually be 9.1%. And you apply that. 30% increase calculation to every other of her skills that provides her potential energy. Um, so now you see why the developers nerfed the immovable mountain um, max HP potential energy amount from 60 to 40. Because with her iconic weapon 600 skill, she would have been able to dish out 90% of her health in her next auto attack which is ridiculous because being a tank she's going to have more health than most heroes so that would be a lot of damage possibly one hit KOs to multiple enemies um, and even if I don't have her iconic weapon awakened yet using the other tank heroes uh, and looking at the I Awakened Iconic Weapon nodes and the elemental benefits, what I can recommend is there are two different recommendations. Um, the first one is four yellow and four green elemental nodes. As you know from the tank heroes, the yellow and green, they provide physical and magical defense respectively. So that would be a way for her to have further damage reduction. Um, it would slightly slow down her potential energy buildup because she's not re receiving as much damage. But at the same time, it's giving her a little bit more survivability. The other elemental node setup would be 8 purple. And that provides more, more to her support tank role what little she has um, by giving more defense to the backline flank heroes. So that's something to add along with her Alpine Shelter skill. Alright, so that's it for Iconic Weapon. Let's go over to her equipment setup. Alright, so here are the recommendations for her equipment setup. Has the usual Aegis Shield plus Earth Runes for tank heroes. Um, it has Scarab. I don't know about Scarab, to be quite honest, because she does benefit when she's under 50% max health. Being that if she uses Alpine Shelter, she won't take any damage, and she recovers anyways. Um, I think, you know, Aegis Shield, 
blocking damage much better. If you wanted to engage in more of her DPS, if you're trying to set her up as um, much more of an offensive tank hero, um, you could always provide the the Sudarshana Chakra, uh, which would increase her damage output from her ultimate. Um, she's already dishing out up to 770% of her attack why not make it higher um, for her runes the earth rune being the top recommendation light rune makes sense because she does engage in a lot of self healing even if there are no healers um, especially when she's under 50% health which the light rune can help out with um, because her self healing gets increased when she's under that amount so yeah her health restoration effects get increased um, but also the runes themselves add a little bit to her survivability by giving her some slight bit of increase in her percentage max health um, regeneration um, if you wanted to engage more in her crowd control side you can either replace her artifact with the uh what's it called um the uh yasakani magatama or you could replace her runes with air runes something to get her cooldown reduced so that she can use alpine shelter and ground shuttering more often so those are some basic recommendations for her equipment setup and uh let's go on to formation Synergy recommendations. Uh, let's start with Freha. Freha at the start of the battle will increase the attack speed of tank and fighter, so Nin would benefit from that. So Freha is a great synergy hero with her, being that they're both within the Verdian hero faction. Um, for bosses, if you for some reason end up using Nin for a boss um, Dionysus it's great to add on the damage not the damage the defense reduction because his skills plus her ultimate um, can pretty much wipe out all of the defense factors when it comes to a boss um, I'd say just a boss uh, Poseidon as a frontline pair for her if you're looking to optimize on crowd control because Poseidon has his Whirlpool of Wrath ultimate and his undercurrent active skill both of which stun the enemies and not just a single target um, but Whirlpool of Wrath will stun multiple targets undercurrents uh, of course it's a single target stun but you got those both and those along with her skills will do a lot of stunning if you're looking for a crowd control type team um, you have Odin obviously his Raven Guardians help anybody who's on the front line but you also have his Hazy Mist passive um, and if you have his iconic weapon increased enough Hazy Mist will provide the same damage reduction to the rest of the team that Odin um, has for himself normally uh, which I believe is 30% so a lot of damage reduction to Nin um, but you know you have the pros and cons with more damage reduction it's gonna take longer for her to store a potential energy to unleash in the auto attack but it adds to her survivability and uh, lastly um, I'm gonna obviously mention Iset, you know, being that they're both a part of the same faction groups, both Luminarch and Verdian. Um, but with the set, you ha not only have the faction bonus and trying to maximize on it, um, you also have Iset providing the um, purifying incantation skill, which provides debuff immunity. So if your Nin 
does not have that iconic weapon skill where she's immune to crowd control. Um, you'll have it set to provide debuff immunity. Um, and this is important because it's set, you know, she's reliant on that auto attack to dish out the stored potential energy damage. And, and I have a feeling that's going to make a big difference in a fight. Um, let's see some last things, some miscellaneous things to note about her. Um, a big counter to Nin would be heroes that have the um, Vicitudes tier 1 skill. That's the one that reduces healing received from the hero across from the user. Uh, by 25% or Morrigan who when she activates her ultimate will stop all healing. It's it's a big part of Ninur Sag's um, survivability is the ability to not only heal herself but um, well yeah that's it is her ability to heal herself and and uh, reduce incoming damage. Um, but that I mean, it's it's also important to note that it's not bad to add healers to a team with her in it. You don't have to rely on just her. So, you know, the usual Verdian healers. Uh, I would go with Nagakanya over Idun. Um, having them both, all right, I guess. Um. And I guess the last thing I have to say is she's, you know, looking like a good hero. Um, but I would not, based on what I've seen with her, my prediction is I would not place her as a game-changing meta hero. That position is still taken up by Morgan. You know, um, the game still has... Amateras and Morgan teams as the top tippy top tier meta team so there's no escaping that for now um, but I'm not saying invest absolutely nothing into Nin she's a good hero so that's been my analysis if you have anything that you discover that you would like me to update um, let me know in the comments.